Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Sweet Spot. We are your hosts. I'm Diane. And I'm Michael Pinball Clements. And we are so excited to be here today. The Sweet Spot really is joy unspeakable, having balance in all you do. It's being grateful, even when things aren't great. The desire to help others when you may be hurting yourself. It is submission to a sovereign God who is in control when things look good or bad. The Sweet Spot means happy times are happier, challenging times are growth opportunities, and love is the ruler of the day. The sweet spot is resting and sometimes wrestling in the arms of the Almighty. Simply put, if you're in your sweet spot, you're probably abiding in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So we hope you join us as we take this journey and engage in topics that we hope will inspire, encourage, challenge, uplift, excite, insight, refresh, restore, revitalize, comfort, stimulate, and strengthen each of you in your daily walk. Welcome to The Sweet Spot. Hello and welcome to The Sweet Spot. We are so excited to be here today. Once again, we have joining us for our second segment of The Sweet Spot, Miss Mo Isom. Mo, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. Part two oh, with Mo. Right. <laughs> right. Now we get into the good yes, stuff. We're yes. going to get into the good stuff. And before we do that, once again, I just want to remind our listeners, if you have not gotten a chance to go and pick up Mo's book. Shame on you. It but. is a phenomenal Phenomenal read. Wreck My Life mm. by Mo Isom. You have to go and get it. When you start reading this, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you will not be able to put it down. It is an awesome book, and she's an awesome, awesome individual, and you want to support her. So please Thank go and you. pick it up. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> so welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. Right. Thank, Thank you, you Thank so you. much for joining us again. Of course. Mm. This feels good. I like it here. I'll come back more often. You like the sweet <laughs> spot. It's a sweet <laughs> spot, exactly. <laughs> Well, we got a chance to get to know you a little bit last week, and uh, uh, not just us, but everybody fell in love with you. And um, you, were, you were telling a little bit about your life growing up in the South, in Georgia, Southern Belle, and, uh, uh, and then, you know, all the things that growing up involves, right? And, you know, uh, some good, some challenging, uh, but you challenge yourself quite a bit, and you, you, you decided at nine years old, after hearing that a friend got a scholarship, you were going to excel, you yeah. were going to get that scholarship. <laughs> so, so, so now you've got that scholarship, and right. not only have you got that scholarship, you got that scholarship to an SEC school, Southeastern yes. Conference, yes. and you're at LSU, yes. Baton Rouge, the Bayou. Baton Rouge, Doing the Bayou day. of Temptation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, I, I went in, um, graduated high school a semester early, headed to LSU. Um, and what we talked about last week kind of was coming off of a bit of an identity crisis, mm -hmm. you know, driven, successful, but at the same time, Satan kind of finding this foothold of control. Mm -hmm. um, and, and before I left for school, saw this opportunity for a new transition. Mm -hmm. and, and God met me with this scripture that, said, come to me, mm. all who are weary and burdened, wow. and I will give you rest. Yes. I couldn't have told you how I came across that scripture. I couldn't have told you where in the Bible or what it meant in the context. Wow. But he met me with that scripture that didn't say, come to me perfect and together, mm -hmm. and then I'll use you. Mm -hmm. It said, come to me if you're weary and burdened, right. and I will give you rest. And my mom had started to instill in me that if I was going to head off to college, I had to f have a faith walk of my own. It could no longer be this following in the parents' footsteps mm -hmm. um, of, of just the faith by inheritance, really. And um, so, so I kind of was trying to, to crawl back to God at that point to figure out what that meant and what that's supposed to look like and um, headed to the bayou. And um, really right off the bat, God began to just rain incredible blessing. So what he had really instilled in my heart at that time mm -hmm. was... You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to know all the scripture. You don't have to know all the chronology of events. Start by giving me the glory. Mm -hmm. And I'll teach you and I'll grow you and, and you know, you will learn and mature. But just start by giving me the glory, about, by taking the focus off of the inward me issues mm -hmm. and beginning to turn out to give the glory um, to God and see what he does with it. And it was insane. My, my second game ever as a freshman 
This is my yes. athletic yes. 15 minutes of fame. Yes. I'm so washed up now, yes. but it was amazing <laughs> in the moment. Second game ever as a freshman, lined up to take a routine free kick and scored a 90-yard goal. Oh, which, my which, goodness. Yeah, I mean, oh it's like my. the Thunder Thighs finally served their purpose. <laughs> yes. oh, uh, it, was, it was insane. No one had ever done oh, it in, wow. in this soccer. Is a, this wow. is a precursor, wow. too. This, yes, yes it, it is. We won't get the, there yet, but that I is, was yes. recruited for my leg strength <laughs> yes. and scored a 90-yard goal. And, That's and amazing. God just began to build this incredible platform as soon as I got to school. Mm -hmm. So can you explain that 90 yard? Like how yes. how long was the ball in the air? About like, 70 plus yards. Like 70 and plus took one bounce over the goalie's head because she misread it and and, and went in. trickled in the net. And <laughs> she it was surreal. I mean, camera yes. crews came the next day because this was a sports center top 10 play. I mean, Absolutely. which is amazing for women's soccer. That doesn't yes. happen. And camera crews come the next day and they're like, we, we want to get some better footage. If you can try to, you know, kick that far again. Y'all, I couldn't get it over the halfway <laughs> wall. I'm like, oh, I tore my uh, yeah. tibias borealis. Like, I had no excuse. Couldn't do it. He just took this amazing wow. moment yes. in time um, and, and allowed my body to do something I could never replicate That's again phenomenal. and used that. That's what I think is so amazing about God is he, we give him the glory. We set our eyes on him and mm -hmm. he begins to use the gifts and the skills he's given us mm -hmm. in really unique ways That's to right. build a platform for his glory. That's right. um, and so that was surreal and just had an amazing freshman year. I mean, finished that freshman year, freshman All American, Louisiana freshman of the year. I mean, SEC this, SEC that, all these amazing mm -hmm. accolades. Um, and really just sort of saw God as oh, wait, this is, I give God the blessing. I give God the glory and the blessings rain down. That's what I sort <laughs> of shifted it. to still That's this it. incomplete right. perspective. But it was like, oh, I, I give the glory, the blessings rain. God, this must be what it means to be a Christian. And wow. still not a a full picture of, of God by any stretch, but that's where I was at the end of that freshman year. So this is quite a paradigm shift because before we were talking about you have being cognizant of God. So right. growing up in a Christian family, being cognizant of God, but but um, getting that that confidence, that personal confidence from from the success you had, from the talents you've been given, right. and, and saying, God, uh, watch me. Mm -hmm. yes. Watch me work. Yes, and, yeah. and uh, so now... Um, just as a freshman in university, you've made that, that's still really early. I mean, you've made that yeah. shift now to say, God, I glorify you. I put you first, mm -hmm. right? And and then real blessings come down and things that actually supersede my own natural ability. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, it wasn't um, the the completeness of who God is, mm -hmm. but it was. A bit of a step forward, you know. At least I was kind of shifting the focus and 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 giving him the glory and kind of just figuring this out. You know, I think sometimes we think for God to use us or to be a bold believer, we've got to get it all. Right. No, it's it's such a journey. It's such a marathon. Um, and so I was sort of in that place at that time, and really just kind of on cloud nine. I was wow. just untouchable, invincible. It had been this amazing freshman year, and I didn't think anything could go wrong. Right. And then I came home for Christmas break and um, yeah, things so, went very wrong. And, and that's, that, that's where I want to go now. Mm -hmm. So um, you get home, you had, you know, doing well in school, everything's going well. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still having, you know, a few issues of your own, but things right. are going very well for you. And you're really close to your dad. Mm -hmm. Like, you were daddy's little girl, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you go home and you find out that there's some things happening with your dad, right? Yeah, I was a little oblivious at first. I mean, for us to be home, our family was just my dad's pride and joy. I mean, he was never home later than 5.30 from work, especially wow. if we were two college girls home right. for a break. He was yes. like glue. All over it. Yes, mm -hmm. all over it. And um, I was so still on cloud nine from my freshman year, mm -hmm. I'm just hardly noticing anything. I'm just focused on enjoying the holidays. Um, but then one night on January 2nd, my dad didn't come home mm -hmm. from work, which was just so weird because, I mean, what, what would he be doing? Day. Yeah, 5.30 yeah. every day and wow. he doesn't come home and the hours are passing and so our angst is kind of rising and we're trying to call a cell phone and it's cut off and we just can't really make sense of much. Um, and my mom called me and my sister down finally into our formal living room and um, the best way to describe it is she just uh, she looked like a marionette mm -hmm. 
she was as pale as a ghost and it was like taking every bit of energy to just even craft words. And she just said, we have to find your father before, uh, we, do, we just have to find your dad. And we don't know what's going on. And we find this love letter beneath the phone that just said, I do love you and had his name signed. And we find a voicemail, but we can't find him. And, and mm. we're clueless. Like you said, there'd been some financial issues that kind of um, ha had come up. That My mom mentioned there were some financial struggles and we just needed to find dad. And to make a very long portion of the story short, we, we woke up that next morning to my mom just screaming, sprinting up the steps with the sheet of paper just crackling in her hand. And mm. we're piling into the car and just speeding around town and I'm begging to see what was on this paper. I, I, we still don't know what's going on. And she finally um, you know, shoved it into the back seat and said, here, read it, then please help me. And mm. I ironed it out and looked down and it was a suicide letter from my dad. Um, had summarized his life in four little paragraphs and we were now trying to f find this man, my, my best friend. I'm a daddy's girl. We're trying to find him before he gives up. And um, again, again, to fast forward, you can read all about it and wreck my life. But um, we really dive into the details in there. But um, my, my dad had picked up and, and headed out, and, and fear had really overcome him. And he uh, put a gun to his heart and pulled the trigger in um, an Alabama hotel room. And so we uh, suddenly suicide, this word suicide was now stamped onto our story. Mm -hmm. And it just obliterated me. It just left this gaping hole in my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and I just took off running. I just took off running from God. God, I thought I give you the glory and the blessings rain down. Right. You know, I thought that's how this was supposed mm -hmm. to look. And, and now I'm seeing my mom become a widow and lose her best friend, my sister shatter. And I'm looking at your body, my dad's body on a morgue table with a bullet hole in his chest. This isn't, this isn't how life is supposed to look. And a good God wouldn't let this happen. How often do we, do we hear and say that? And I just took off running from God and, and really had to go back to school um, and ran into depression, ran into anxiety, ran into promiscuity, ran into all the sin-sized pieces we use mm -hmm. to fill the God-sized mm -hmm. hole in our heart. Yeah. I d it's a tale as old as time. I just took mm -hmm. off finding anything to numb that pain mm -hmm. and just ran for a while. Wow. I, um, I can kind of relate to your story, mm -hmm. um, losing my dad at the age of 19. He was yeah. murdered, so I, I totally feel your pain there. Um, as you're going through this, um, you have to go back to school. Right. You have to go back to LSU and you have to get your act together so that you can perform well on the soccer field. Mm -hmm. how, how do you do that? How, how do you manage to make that happen? Um, not well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I write about it and, and I call myself, I was really a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Mr. Hyde. Hyde. I was, I yeah, mm -hmm. an amazing actress again on the surface. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, we're doing fine and mom's healing and Sloan's doing well and we act like mm -hmm. things are progressing because really when you're in grief and everything's so numb, you get to a point where the world is grieving with you for a while and then the world keeps spinning keeps and going. people That's move right. on and That's it's right. to no fault of their own, but life keeps happening mm -hmm. and you feel isolated like you can't even process yet, yeah. That's right. but life has to go on. That's right. um, and it's a very fragile and very scary place to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I said all the right things, right. but I was just living a very different life in the darkness, in the quiet. Um, with boys, with alcohol, with partying. It was anything, I was just like a machine. It was like, get in, give me my fix, get out. Get in, mm -hmm. give me my fix, get out. Mm -hmm. The enemy continuing co to convince me, and if I just do a little more, indulge a little more, try a little more, eventually this hole in my heart will fill. Right. Um, but if anyone's listening and, and running in the same direction, I would just say that if you are, are seeking um, anything of this world to fill the hole in your heart, you'll be seeking your whole life, mm -hmm. your whole life. And I was just struggling. You know, athletically, it was almost still a bit of a release to get on the soccer right. field, kind of nostalgic. Mm -hmm. And um, the energy that I was able to muster up and play on the field was kind of all the energy I had. Mm -hmm. um, but somehow continued to have a record-breaking season and um, find some hope in that athletic side of things. But... Um, in the personal side of things, I was just living a very different life. Right. So you're going through this, and 
you're thinking that you know things are getting better, you're, you're beginning to piece your life back together again, right? right? And you're finishing up year two, mm -hmm. sophomore, had another great year, yeah. And you decide that you're going to go home for the holidays, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I was headed home for Thanksgiving break, and um, like we talked about, there had been some surface level success still. You know, there were days where I felt a little better. It was kind of a roller coaster of emotions, mm -hmm. but. In the, in the depths of me, there was still this really cry of my heart that became, God, I don't know if I even believe that you're real. Mm. And if you're so real, do something. Reveal yourself to me somehow because I feel right. resentment. I feel hatred. I feel frustration. You know, you know what, God, if you're so real, just wreck my life. That really became kind of my, the cry of my heart, just wreck it because I understand why my dad did what he did and I see it as a viable option mm. at this point. I'm this broken. Mm. And so if, if you're real, do something because um, I'm, I'm headed down. You know, I was just really in a dark place and heading home for Thanksgiving break, I never quite expected he would answer that prayer very literally. Um, and you can read the book starts there actually mm. on this drive home. Um, and, and lost control of my vehicle, 1.30 in the morning, no one else on the road, just in this resentful, angry, numb place, lost control of my vehicle, flipped my Jeep three times, landed upside down in a ravine at 1.30 in the morning, completely physically broken, neck, ribs, face, lungs, liver, I mean, just obliterated. And um, wow. it was in that wreckage, people hear and they think, Oh gosh, another piece of adversity. Yes. But it was in that wreckage, the cry of my heart had been, God, reveal yourself to me. And it was hanging upside down in a Jeep that had the engine stripped mm. clean off wow. that he said, I will wreck your life to save your life mm. and to save your eternal story. Mm. And, and he'll, he'll do it. This doesn't mean he'll, he'll throw you off the road if you mm. pray that prayer immediately, but God will do mm. whatever he chooses to do to intervene in our life to wreck the life we are living mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form to save the life that we have That's for right. eternity. That's right. um, and the Holy Spirit just entered that wreckage and blew up my heart. Mm. My goodness. My goodness. Wow. Right? That's I'll start powerful. preaching now. I'm yes. going to start like, sweating. Like, we're, we're both sitting here just fascinated. We don't know what to say next. Yes. Like We're like, okay, give us more. Well, it's, it's chapter it's, seven is, is my favorite chapter in the book. It's called Revelation and the Wreckage mm -hmm. because that chapter um, really, I was able to just pour onto those pages all that God revealed to me in that moment, mm -hmm. alone, in this car. It's like Paul on the road to Damascus where he dropped him and blinded him. I mean, he just mm -hmm. dropped me and brought me to this place of complete brokenness, physical at this point, and mental and emotional, you know, the year mm -hmm. prior with my dad. And he began to download the depths of what God said about me. He began to download the depths of the gospel and what the cross meant for my life. Mm -hmm and just speak to me, you are seen, you are known, you are loved, I have plans for you, I have purpose for you. Satan is waging battle after battle after battle, but I have won the war. Mm. And so are you gonna continue to allow the haphazard winds of life to hopefully blow your broken pieces back together? Mm. Are you going to trust me as the master artist to sit down and begin to rebuild you into a new creation? And it was just, I mean, I could go on, I get goosebumps talking about it now. Yes. It was just Absolutely. in an instant, in an instant when God chooses, it, it takes a whisper on That's his right. behalf That's right. to transform our hearts. Mm -hmm. The hole in my heart filled. It was mm -hmm. unbelievable. I, I, I marvel, I, I truly marvel at your maturity time and time again mm -hmm. because you know, we, we hear in the, in the Bible where, say, the good shepherd, right, mm -hmm. Talk, talking about God is the good shepherd yeah. and he takes care of his sheep. So even if, if they had a sheep that was, you know, wandering off mm -hmm. and will get into danger, mm -hmm. the shepherd would break the sheep's legs. I love that right. you know that. Yes. I was about to say yes. that. Yes. <laughs> they yes. would break the sheep's legs and carry them that's so the right. sheep that's would right. learn to be dependent on the shepherd. Yes, yeah. yeah. so, so oh, they, they yes. would wander off. That's right. That's mm -hmm. But... Um, what I what I um, what I really am taken by is I, I I I would never suspect that sheep to ask the shepherd to break his leg. Right, that's right. And you I, ask that question. Mm -hmm. I don't think initially it was with 
all that great intent. Right. It was God end it. <laughs> you know, right. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm mm. so hurting, so broken. Mm. The yes. prayer started really as okay. this cry of desperation yes. and honestly anger. Right. But God's not a God who's thrown off his throne when we come to him That's with a little right. frustration right. in our tone. Yes. And, and what was amazing was that after the accident, uh, after the shepherd broke my legs, right. quite literally, my prayer then moving forward continued to be, God, wreck my life. But it was wreck my insecurities, wreck my depression, wreck the lies I believed, wreck my dependencies, wreck anything you need to wreck in my life so that I can look less like me and more like you. Because me is all kinds of messed up. But you, God, are good and you're holy. And he revealed in that wreckage, it shifted this term wreck for me and I saw that our suffering could be sacred rather than right. scarring, mm -hmm. that he was going to use everything for his glory. Mm -hmm. And so, God, whatever you need to do then, I became the sheep saying, mm -hmm. break my legs again if you need, you know, mm -hmm. that I would not wander from your faithful love. Mm -hmm. It became, um, you know, a vulnerability mm -hmm. and an openness and a humility to God. You reserve the right to use my life however you need for your will to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So make it not my ways, make it yours and, and use it. I want in my life mm -hmm. to be available to be used. Wow. Amen. Not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. uh, blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say, say all, all men are these evil, evil against, against you yeah. falsely, mm -hmm. uh, for great is your reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. That's uh, what, what, an, what an outlook. Um, I. Um, I want to maybe go back just a little bit, sure. and um, because I really want to sort of say, um, you know, Diane, you know, spent some time searching. It wasn't. Uh, it was a difficult time when she lost her father, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I. I um, I want you maybe to talk to someone who has that significant mm -hmm. loss because you talked about trying to do all of these things to fill that hole. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I, I, I haven't had anything like this. So I can't, I can't yeah. say it earnestly. I can't say it authentically. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say? Because I, I, in, in a situation like that, right, we say, right, turn to God, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to turn to God when you believe God has betrayed you, right? right? Mm -hmm. What would you say to a person may, maybe who may be listening right now who um, something difficult has happened to them? Uh, you know, when growing up, you know, all those little Southern say, sayings, they say, listen, you don't, you don't, you don't have to stick your hand on the stove to know yeah, it's hot. Yeah, to learn it's right, hot. Right, right. Yeah. I already did that. See, I got the scars right there. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do what I did. So, so is there some, uh, just a petition you, you would say to someone who is hurting? Yeah. Right well, the first thing I would say, just because you mentioned that don't stick your hand there, it's hot. Mm -hmm. There were amazing lyrics to a song that I love um, that said, do you ever seem to learn from what you've been told mm. or do you really have to hold the experience? Mm. And I just, those words resonated with me because I think we're a people who need to heed wise words shared mm -hmm. um, and to surrender the curiosity we have of all that we think we can fix and we right. think we can do and the stuff of the world that we think might mm -hmm. feel good to try mm -hmm. or indulge in. That's right. If we could stop and really, I mean, where God brought me after the loss of my dad and anybody listening who's had the loss of a loved one or really any mm -hmm. tremendous adversity, I think the thing that leads us to our struggling and our wandering and our pain are the unanswered questions and the lack of closure we feel right. and um, the things left open-ended mm -hmm. because the enemy loves our, our curiosity yeah. and our desperation mm -hmm. for wanting answers, and wanting a solution, that. wanting mm -hmm. resolve. Yeah. Because not having answers, not having solution, leaving things unresolved all steals peace. Mm -hmm. It steals our peace. Yeah. It steals our rest. I would go to bed at night picturing my dad in that hotel room, every scenario of what could have happened and yeah. how questioning why my love wasn't enough for, to change the outcome of that day, questioning mm -hmm. ways that I'd interacted with him before, mm -hmm. questioning anything and everything as if 
I were the one who could have saved the situation. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the times our pain and our wandering grows out of our um, lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. But God invites us to lean not on our own mm -hmm. understanding. Yes. And he yes. actually, in my heart, began to say, can you move forward without all the answers? Mm -hmm. Can you? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I need to know the answer. Yes. You know? yeah. And what he really began to say is, you can only move forward without all the nice. answers. Because right. that is what requires faith. Mm -hmm. Faith to believe that I might not have all the loose ends tied up. I might, know all, I might not know all the solutions. I might mm -hmm. not have all the answers. But I have faith to believe there is a God who is orchestrating something bigger than I can see, mm. bigger than I know, far beyond my own understanding. Right. So lean not on my own understanding because mm. it's microscopic yes. compared right. to That's what right. he's yes. doing. That's right. And I think if, if there's someone out there struggling, I would, I would encourage you and challenge you um, in saying, can you release your need for control? Mm. here your need to know it all and humble yourself mm. before the Lord so he can lift yeah. you up with a peace that surpasses all that's understanding right. mm -hmm. with that's knowledge right. and truth mm -hmm. that he could write beloved on your heart because your heart has surrendered to him and understanding amen. that he is God amen he amen. is above all things mm -hmm. he's sovereign mm -hmm. he is mighty and that's really hard <laughs> Really I said, you sound like a preacher really that knows hard. how to do it. I mm -hmm. still struggle with it all the time. Right. I want the answers. I want solution. Mm -hmm. I want to figure it all out. But we're just going to be wondering and wandering our mm -hmm. whole life That's if right. we can't move forward without those things. Mm -hmm. yeah, wondering and wandering. Yeah, that was I, good. Somebody tweet yes, that. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you, you've just given us so many yeah. wonderful nuggets. And uh, I, I, I love this, the, the portion of the scripture that yeah. says... Um, uh, that peace that passes all, all understanding. understanding, right? Mm -hmm. That's such a, a rich statement. But you gave mm -hmm. me something else there too. Uh -oh. Surrender your curiosity. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful, beautiful concept. Yeah. Surrendering your curiosity. Now, um, I uh, I don't want to interrupt the flow of the spirit, but I do want people um, to understand uh, some success that that happened sort of post accident yeah. as we went on and so 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 yeah, maybe let's let, where you are now. let yeah because so absolutely yeah okay. yes. um I, it was incredible after after making Jesus truly the lord of my life in an independent faith walk i began to just really lean into what god said about me um and continue with my skills and the blessings and the gifts mm -hmm. he'd given me but understanding that they were a vessel for him to use. So it's no longer about me and my success. Mm -hmm. My mantra was no longer what I said in the last episode of, yes. Mom, the world will know my name. Exactly. It was, God, use me so the world will know Jesus' name. Right. Um, and so athletically, continued to do that. In fact, a lot of people said after my accident and all my injuries that I wouldn't be able to compete at the same level. <laughs> uh, came back. Competed at the same level, finished my career holding almost every record at LSU and, and records wow. in the SEC, then went on to train with and try out for the men's football team at LSU. Wow. Because there's this little no, bit no. of competitor wow. in so, me. So when, when we say football, that, that's, that's not football. what we call that's the world football. football. That's not football. That's yes. soccer. That's American football no, is the place you, so, so you, you wow. so, so you went out for the American football, like in the SEC, like like the richest, most competitive, uh, most dynamic. Yes. Yes. This is, yes. <laughs> and I was like, bloop. I want, I want to give this a shot. And, and it was amazing. The team, I'd trained alongside the team. Football and soccer always trained in the same facility. They'd seen my work ethic, my mm -hmm. drive. And so God, and you can read it all about it in the yes. book because I know we're pushed for time. But um, God opened doors. I worked my hardest for 18 months. I trained alongside those guys, lifting, running, kicking. Um, and then you and can you read the, the book. Female. What happened? First female in the SEC. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was amazing. Yes. That's Mo Eisen. Yes, <laughs> that's Mo Eisen. And then and then moved back home, started ministry, speaking and writing, and got um, got married. Met my husband Jeremiah, who wow. I adore. Six months later, um, found out we had a bun in the oven. Have an eight month old now. Beautiful. And you want to talk about um, a challenge even greater than the football team, greater than <laughs> soccer, greater than the car accident, anything. Birth a 10.1 pound baby without oh, medication. Oh, my <laughs> wow. Without wow. medication. 
celebration. Are you serious? My greatest victory. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. Now, now I, I want to just give you give you a little bit of time to reflect because uh, we can we can keep going here. Um, we we don't have restrictions uh, online, and so uh, just maybe any place whether whether it's how you met your hubby, whether it's if there's anything that you'd like to elaborate further on in the story, we'd love to yeah just have yeah, you take, um, take a minute to do so. Well, so many of the of the chapters in the latter portion of the book um, really get to dive in deep of what life looked like after coming to know Christ, yes. um, and and all he continued to do with soccer, with football, um, but then it continued on even after the athletics ended, and I headed back home. Um, there's a great chapter that dives into allowing him to wreck the plans we think we have for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew what my career path would be, that it would be broadcast. I mean, I'd studied it. I was I enjoyed it, tried to beat down that door after college. And, and on paper, it should have been an open door. Um, but God kept it closed, and he opened another door with ministry that was really um, incredible. And, uh, you know, that, that seems amazing now, and, and it's five years into it now, and it's like, great. But there's times where we have our plans and our thoughts, and we know Jesus, and we're walking right. with Jesus, and we think this is what I'll do mm -hmm. to bring glory to God, mm -hmm. and he still changes the script on That's us. Right. And that can provide a lot of questioning in our heart and mm -hmm. wondering and trying to follow God's promptings isn't always easy because he doesn't toller down with a megaphone. Mm -hmm. He puts feelings on our hearts. He opens doors. He presents unique That's opportunities. Right. And it becomes, life becomes about saying yes to God. Mm -hmm. When it doesn't make any sense, right. when we don't know what it's going to be right. even 10 minutes from now, That's how right. it's going to look, That's right. it's saying yes to God. So there's a great chapter in there about that. Um, then I love the chapter um, that does talk about meeting my husband and um, getting engaged and married. I actually wrote a blog post um, after we got engaged called, I just got engaged and immediately doubted my decision. Here's why I still said yes. And it went wow. viral around the world. Wow. Never would have known so many people wrestled with the same feelings wow. of the intensity of the moment. Mm -hmm. Of the man you know you're gonna marry, you I've been I've picked out the ring six months prior. <laughs> I'm waiting for the engagement. Um, but then in the moment of really saying, I will follow mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. for all the days of my life, and I trust that you're following God and mm. marriage, this covenant, God began to just flip the script in my mind and heart of what marriage and the covenant made before God really wow. meant. Beyond what um the best wedding, the best mm. dress, the best ring. Mm -hmm. We have this idea as a culture that um, love should serve us. Yes. Mm. It should be all yes. right and good for us. That's right. When actually the covenant of marriage calls us to die to self mm -hmm. and to love for another. That's right. To take the lashes of their shortcomings, That's to right. take the, the, the failings and, and the mm -hmm. trials and the tribulations and to rise ultimately like Christ rose for us mm -hmm. in, in love and with faith in God through that. So that's probably yeah, one of my favorite portions beautiful. of the book because it talks about that my groom who I love. But um, there's amazing there's amazing chapters in there that are so much more than we got to talk about. But um, yeah, and then I need to like write a whole other book on becoming a mom because that's yes, just, <laughs> mom. No, what you need that to write a, another chapter on is birthing a 10 pound. Yes, yes birthing a 10 pound child. Yes. Pray for me still. Uh, um, so but can you um, concisely speak to marriage mm -hmm. and and what it means? Because so many people, um, uh, you know, maybe didn't. I, I, you, you you spoke um, uh, accurately mm -hmm. and efficiently um, just now, but I, I, I would I think we would be well served by by having you elaborate a little bit more. I know we're yeah. taking and a little extra time. Yeah, and we are, and we know that you have a plane to catch today. Yes. So you can wrap it up however you'd like. Sure. Um, I I love ending on the note of marriage because it's um, an incredible, incredible covenant a promise made to God to love another mm -hmm. like Christ loved us. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I see a world that's missing that in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, that's marrying for the feel-good emotions, for the love, for the lust, for the 
wants for what this person can do for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then life gets rocky and rough mm -hmm. and, and marriage is put to the test, Lord, to the Amen. fire quickly. Yeah. Um, yes, but a, a, a covenant with God, a promise to love another like Christ first loved us by the strength and power of God and the Holy Spirit, because we cannot do that alone. No, no. Lord, Amen. I fail every day Amen. for my husband and he for me. Amen. But the fact that we're given this amazing opportunity to walk through life with another, wives submitting to their husbands and his leadership, husbands loving their wives mm -hmm. like God loves them, like their own bodies, mm -hmm. like Jesus loved the church. I mean, it... We talked before the show mm -hmm, about how we, we don't always understand how people can navigate this life without, without God him. and without That's faith right. in Jesus. Yeah. And I have never seen that more on display than in marriage. I think it would be so incredibly hard to navigate marriage mm -hmm. without the grace of a king yeah. who says there might be seasons where none of this looks good, That's none right. of this feels good, mm -hmm. none of this is perfect, but the only thing perfect for you in this mm -hmm. equation is grace. Amen. And that grace abounds Amen. in marriage. Amen. So marriage becomes this partnership where forgiveness is offered, forgiveness is asked, mm -hmm. where love is given and love is received, mm -hmm. where um, you're coming together and in, in many instances bringing life into the world yeah. to parent. And it's an unbelievable journey, and I could ramble for another hour about it. Um, and I'm sure I'm rambling now, but it yeah, is, it's beautiful. just been a, a new way to learn that I have seen mm -hmm. God's amazing love for me through my husband's amazing love for me that is there to stay. Mm -hmm. We're a world that wants to speed things up, and we want to treat our boyfriends like they're our husbands. Mm -hmm. And we want, you know, this... this yeah unconditional committed love um, from someone who hasn't committed to us yet. Mm -hmm. And we are left brokenhearted and confused. And um, marriage is this amazing, this covenant is this beautiful place of security. Um, when you're both walking with Christ together in it, mm -hmm. that says you are mine and I am yours. Just like with the Father, you are mine and I am yours. And, and this is gonna be hard and this is gonna be amazing and this is gonna be fun and this is gonna be challenging. But in all things, we're in this together until the end. Um, and it's just been really special to learn about that. And I'm only almost two years in. Our anniversary is wow. next month. Yes. Um, wow, you're a baby in yes. it. Oh, I'm that's a baby. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> you, you have a real gift to articulate. You, you, um, you say things in a way that are tangible, that people can understand, and it makes sense. Um, so. And you do it so eloquently, and so it's it's been uh, just a real pleasure. I we don't often hear people articulate marriage very well. Yeah. Right? Um, I tell guys that that when I don't love my wife, mm -hmm. right. Um, that it's my fault, not theirs, mm -hmm. right? It's nothing she can do, yeah. right, to take that love away because that love is without condition. We say unconditional all the time. Um, we talk about that commitment to God. So we've made that commitment to God first and, and then to her, mm -hmm. right? And so as I love her, as Christ loves the church, Christ gave his life for the church, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I surrender daily for her. Right. And when I don't do that, right, it doesn't matter what she did, mm -hmm. right? When I don't do that, I am the one that's wrong, yeah. right? And um, so that, that love thing, one isn't a feeling. Right. Two, it's, it, it doesn't get hot and hot or cold, right? We, right. Don't, we, don't, you know, we don't fall out of love mm -hmm. when we've made the commitment. It's the old story about the bacon and egg breakfast. The chicken was involved, but the pig was committed, right? <laughs> so, so, so that commitment, that, uh, that forever commitment that we'll, ever, we'll forever honor each other, forever be together, uh, forever be committed to one another. And, um, and if we could... Um, 
if our world could learn that, if, if we could um, begin to go back and adopt that, um, the family is really, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the foundation uh, yeah. of, of our uh, society and the foundation of a healthy, any healthy community, any, a healthy culture, any healthy country. Yeah. And if we, got, if we have healthy families, mm -hmm. we got a chance. Yeah. Right. So thank you for spreading that word. Continue to do so. You're of amazing. Um, can't say enough superlatives about you. And thank uh, you. we're so grateful for you. And God continue to bless you. You Absolutely. You, you really are a sweet Absolutely. spot on this earth. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you, you so much for, for being on. here on the right. sweet spot. You have been absolutely amazing. And again, listeners, please, please, please go out and purchase Mo Isom Wreck My Life amazing book <laughs> phenomenal person thank you for joining us here in the sweet spot until next time stay in your sweet spots